Hi, my name's Helen and this is my channel, Helen Mary Jo. If you're new here, then welcome. If you're returning, thank you. And if you're a Hell's Bell, hello. Um, two things today, quite different things. Um, the first is I, I'm sure most of you have heard of um, this deodorant called Wild and um, they got in touch with me and as you know um, I was using Pit Rock which is like the, the natural crystal deodorant and I was getting on with that really well and then it just seems to have stopped working um, and I guess your body kind of gets used to whatever you use and so I had to stop using that and then I started using Mitchum but that makes my armpits itch um, so I had been looking around, I've been asking various people and everybody's got an opinion, haven't they? And then this company got in touch with me called Wild and they said, would I be interested in trying it? And I'd heard about them, obviously. And um, so I like their whole ethos, which is all about being sustainable, natural, recyclable and everything else. And um, so they sent me this. It's rather cute. It's got my name on it and uh this is aluminium and then it comes you get like the little push-up cartridge that comes inside this one smells lovely this is cotton and sea salt which is right up my alley because it's really fresh smelling and you just roll it up obviously just like any roll-on and then use it obviously how you use a roll-on deodorant and um so far so good it's i love the smell it's not an antiperspirant but and i know like we're in the cooler weather now but i'm i'm just not sweating as much i think i am through the menopause oh my goodness i probably just jinx the whole thing <laughs> i hope not um but it's working for me at the moment now, next week, as you know, I'm going to Dubai, so that will be a really big test. Because it's solid, you don't have to worry going through security with um, this particular one. This is compostable. All the packaging is um, paper, and obviously that can go in the recycling. So it's all very sustainable. It's on a subscription service, and you can chop and change that as you please. So yeah, it's certainly worth a try. And anything, you know, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but uh, we've all got to try and do our bit, haven't we, for the planet. And so I've got a 20% discount code, which I'll put here, and then it will be in the link in the description box down below. So give it a go. I think it's very attractive. I, th I mean, they must have known how much I love these kind of colors, but I think that's just a coincidence to be fair. But anyway, so that's my little take on this new wild deodorant i just get the the refills as and when i need them and uh there we go rob doesn't need to use the deodorant because his sweat does not smell how's that for a fact and my son-in-law's the same and there is a very interesting fact that connects them but i'll tell you that another time because it's totally bonkers my hair is a bit bonkers today as well isn't it, it looks like something from peyton place like showing my age even more. I don't know what's going on there. I must have I must have got a bit dark. Anyway, um need to get that off. Don't think that'll come off easily. Anyway, that's that's the wild deodorant. Give it a go. I think you'll love it. Um well I hope you'll love it. Take two, change of subject. Um I've mentioned that uh I was gonna make a door swag. I made one at Christmas that quite a few people said, Oh, would you show us how you did that? And so this is quite brave for me because I'm no expert, but I have done a lot of flower arranging in my time and I have held wreath making classes and things like that. And it does help if you've got the equipment for sure. But I will link everything that I can down below and um, we'll get on and make this door swag together. I'm just going to address that, that black mark on my face because it's driving me mad. So just uh, hold that thought. Right, that's a bit better, I think. So, first thing that I have is one of these. Now, these are just, they're made by Oasis, 
and they're just like a little container that you know i use these for when i made my daughter's um uh pew ends you know in the church so just that was that was what i used so i will link these i should be able to find them online or if you go to a local florist they may well be able to help you and i have just put in a piece of foam that's for dried flowers so this isn't this isn't wet this isn't fresh flower foam that's what i would use at christmas when i use fresh spruce spru fresh spruce and um yeah so that can easily i've got a hook that rob put on my door like a chrome hook that that will sit on quite nicely and what i have done is measured how long my swag can be because um it's an interesting sentence isn't it how long can my swag be? Um, and mine can't be any longer than 50 centimetres because otherwise it interferes with the uh, letterbox. And I don't get much post these days. Uh, you know, I don't want the postman catching, catching it. Now, I haven't actually made one of these with artificial foam before. So it's gonna be interesting. I'll show you the components that I've got and then I'll kind of change the angle of the camera so the places like the range in the uk and hobby lobby in in america and i'm sure there's other kind of stores around i got a couple of these sprigs just for some fake color berries and so on and then i have this is dried this was called uh oh i think it was just I can't remember, it's a deciduous plant of some description and that's been dried nicely. And then I've got a ton of this. My friend got me this from the wholesalers and so there is a lot of it. So I've got this dried eucalyptus in all these lovely orangey berry colours, very autumnal. This is autumnal. I mean, you can, you know, if you're so inclined, you can add a couple of pumpkins into it towards Halloween if you want to. And then um, I've got these fake maple leaves, which I may or might, may not use, but I'll sort of do those at the end. Um, so that's my kind of foliage and berries. Um, I was looking, I've got tons of fir cones somewhere, but I don't know where they are and Rob's at work. And then um, I've got tons of ribbons because I used to do wreath making classes. So... You know, I had to have a good selection. I've just brought this one down off the shelf so you can see the various ones. I'm probably going to go with um, the Hessian because it, it's just, well, I don't know. That's, that's kind of, look, it's all dusty. That's quite autumnal as well, isn't it? What I'll do is I'll make the wreath, uh, the swag rather, and then I will decide what I think looks best so like I say I'm no expert but it's, it's just an idea you kind of get the idea of what you want the finished product to look like and then just build it from there so I will do my very best to um, uh, kind of show you what I'm doing as I go along but just have a go you know it's it's fun and it always feels really nice to have something that you made yourself. So I'll stop the camera, I'll repos reposition it so you can see what I'm doing and hopefully we can take it from there. What I should have said is I've got some wire cutters here and I have got my florist scissors. And if you don't have a pair of florist scissors, these are marked because I've got about 10 pairs of these. So when I use them at classes, I, I could you know, know they were mine. Um, if you haven't got a pair of florist scissors, you really should invest in some. You'll use them every time you have flowers. Um, so, I think because I have got so much of the eucalyptus, I'm going to start with that first. And you can see it's it's a fair old big bunch of of um, leaves. So, I my biggest thing here is being mindful of the length because I am terrible for making things bigger than they should be. So I said 50, didn't I? So I'm kind of, so from there, it's a maximum of 50. So that's about 
four inches over the end of this box that I'm working on top of. So I really, really need to be mindful of that. So what I'm gonna do is from this one particular, I mean, I am kind of squashing myself up for space here. I'm just gonna snip all these off so that I've got some stems to get started with. So that's a nice long stem there, but if I put that in, it's gonna be far too long. So I'm gonna use this as like my guide, if you like. So it can't be longer than there. So what I'm having to do is cut that. I can still use that piece. And that's gonna to have to be my longest point. So um, let's see. I can get this in a better position. So I'm going to put that in facing down. So the natural bends of that, that branch or stem is facing down. So I'm gonna put that as low as I can into this foam. And you'll feel it's nice and secure. Push it in, you know, a reasonable level. And let me just check. I'm just gonna check the length because I make this mistake all the time. I do it in everything I do. Yeah, so that is 50, so that's fine. So if I know that that is my longest place that it can be, I can't go far wrong. Now, the other thing to be aware of when you're using anything like this is to think of it in nature. You know, so you want it kind of flowing. So you just start to build this up. Be, be careful. I'm just gonna take that off there because when you're poking the stems in, what you don't want to happen is that you catch it on a leaf and push the leaf in with the stem. Because if you do that, you're going to compromise the foam and it won't be as, um, you know, kind of hospitable, if you want a better expression for your other stems. Oh, my hands are going to look like I've smoked 40 a day, aren't they? So just starting to broaden that out with the length here, and I will build up that length too, but I'm just giving it that shape at the bottom. So at this stage of the game, you can just start to layer up your stems. I'm just gonna start with a lot of this uh, eucalyptus at the beginning so that, um, we start to give it some sort of nice body. And then um, I'll do the same thing with um, some more of these stems. When you cut, if you're gonna trim a stem down, cut it as close as you can to those leaves and then make sure that you can't see that in the arrangement because nobody wants to see a cut end in any, any flower arrangement of any description. So I'm just building this up, you can see. I mean, ideally I would like this longer, but I just can't. The only other thing I could do, I'm just thinking what I could do is, I might, I might actually tie it here and have that handle covered. I'm just gonna go and check the front door and see, see what I can do. Hold on. No, it's no good, I can't get away with it. I just, you know, you, you won't be able to use the door knocker or anything if I if I do that. So I've just got to be satisfied with what I have. So just building that up, just every so often, just take it back and look at it and see. I mean, that doesn't look anything at the moment. It just looks like a bunch of leaves shoved in. But hopefully as it starts to build, it will take on you know, its own kind of look. And um, at this stage now, I just want to add in some of this to give it that contrast. I don't want to get so far up that I've got no room left for these. You just always start with the, the base. So bearing in mind that's my longest, I need to go about there. 
make sure that you've got as clean a stem as possible to go in. Otherwise you will find, as I said, it kind of makes too big a hole. lovely that actually isn't it one of you clever ladies will tell me what it is I'm sure I'm not a gardener at all let Dolly out this is so lovely because it's nice either side so just going into the bottom of this to um, give it some contrast and give it some width as well. And you can even little pieces like this, you know, you can use them. I'll just stick that in there for now and um, build it up. Oh, I really like this one. My friend was going to the wholesaler and, and uh, she said, oh, do you want me to find you something? And I said, oh yes, please. And uh, she did a good job. I really like this one. You need at least at least two types of leaf um, and to be honest probably more so I just need a longer piece on the top there you'll, you'll just see what looks you know what looks good to you is probably going to be right because you you know you've you've seen it in in real life so to speak so you can see that's starting to take on its um, own form really and I'm just going to now put in some more of the some of these eucalyptus, eucalyptus stems are more red than others so I just want to get that colour balance in there to kind of start bringing through the kind of redder leaves, more orangey leaves. You know, most florists, if you go in, are happy to sell you, well, anything really. I mean, to be honest, they're all struggling, aren't they? So, you know, if you go in and ask them nicely, they'll probably let you have some stems. Can you see that's starting to build? Now, before I get carried away with just the bottom half, I'm gonna kind of foliage the top half of one of them. I know that's not a verb in, in real life, but it's, um, well, in, in the floristry game, they would just say green up. So they would green up the arrangements. That's almost the first thing you do when you're doing table arrangements or anything like that. And that's where you just start to you know, get um, get the thing kind of covered, really, is the bottom line of what you're doing. And, you know, sometimes when you're doing this, you think, oh, no, it's all going wrong. But usually, by the end of it, you know, you're kind of happy with where you've got to. I'm going to be using... I mean, I have got some flowers that I might use, but I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. So just keep working it up, keeping the flow going of the of the arrangement. I mean, that looks very autumnal, doesn't it? Um, I'm just going to snip this down so that I don't have to keep stopping and cutting. Yet. I think I might because I have um, 
done an arrangement, well, I've done it quite a few times actually, where I just put stalks at this end and the bow here so that it just looks like a, a naturally tied bouquet. And I may well do that again. This is, this is coming along quite nicely, actually. I mean, the flowers speak for themselves, really, don't they? You know. Nature is such a wonderful thing. And not to be taken lightly, the way some of our politicians are behaving, you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't know, would you? I'm gonna, this one from the range, I'm gonna try and split this down so that I can just pop those berries in the middle there. You know, it does get fiddly, but don't panic very forgiving so that's given it some focus um, I've got a little acorn there so you know I mean you can go out and forage and find some acorns and and berries I'm sure and it just gives it just gives it some depth into the arrangement um, and what you'll find is that all of these things that are wired onto this will will come off and, and they're quite um, pliable too. So I'm just going to go in this one a bit longer. And kind of hidden behind. Can you see? I know it's hard to see at the moment. And then I need one, if I can, I need one longer here because you've got the balance of the one, two, three. So where's the other one? If necessary, I can extend this with um, a florist wire. This is what I mean. When you've been doing anything like this hobby for a while, you end up, you know, with um, like, a, you know, a stock, if you like, of things. And uh, I'm just gonna loop that through the first little stalk there. And then just make sure that's secured around. So I get the extension of the length. So now you can see I've, I've made that a much longer, as they would call it, pick and feed that through until it finds the home. And there you've got the balance of the one, two, three, and that gives it that added depth. I just wanna get something else in front of that, another piece of the um, red. Kind of keeping an eye on it to make sure I don't use it all up to kind of soon because I need that to go through as well but this foam is amazing in as much as it will accommodate so much you start to wonder you know will it cope and it invariably does so I've got another fur cone on there so you just kind of rip it off there's no i don't think there's any technical term for that is there i'm just going to put those together to give that a kind of a its own focus and then carry on greening up So again, I'm just getting a new stem and trimming that down.
it's amazing what you can find online now. I mean, when I started doing floristry, you know, I, I don't even, I'm, I'm not sure we had Amazon even. I don't know how long that's been around. Feels like forever, but it's not, is it? Um, so, you know, it was really hard to, to find equipment and, and what you needed to, to have these little hobbies. So I want to be aware not to get this too wide, if you know what I mean, because it'll start to take on its own kind of life otherwise and uh, be too big. But always remembering the flow. See, that didn't work there. It was just sticking out too much. So start putting few little stems in and never forgetting the side because um I just mentioned this um whilst I'm I'm doing this and um, I've said before uh I've got Amazon not Amazon I've got uh, YouTube premium because it's it's kind of for me it's like a business expense really and um I had got that through the Apple store and that's a really nice broad leaf there, isn't it? I, I'm gonna see if I can get that in towards the back. Because although you can't see it straight off, it does provide some depth. Um, yeah, so I, I'd, I'd got, got it through the um, Apple store. And then when the subscription, you know, was coming up for renewal at the end of the year, YouTube messaged me. Now, I can't remember the exact prices, but you can see for yourselves. And I think Apple was £2 a year more. £2 a month more, not a year. Then going directly with YouTube, which, I mean, considering I effectively work for YouTube, I hadn't realised at all. So I think it's twelve ninety nine a month. Uh, direct with YouTube as opposed to fifteen ninety nine or even maybe more with Apple, which I think is outrageous. But I'm just telling you, I know it's expensive. Um, but I got rid of some other subscriptions that I had because I realised that actually I was using YouTube more than any of them. And I am such an impatient person. I just could not stand all the adverts. That's the truth. Um, so if you do watch a lot of YouTube, you know, you might want to have a look at that. And, and But if you do, definitely do it through YouTube and not through Apple. I, I had no idea that was even a thing. So just for your information. So I'm just now making sure that the sides are covered because there is nothing worse if you open the door and see, um, you know, the sides of the arrangement. It's the same if you do a wreath or anything. I actually would do a swag again this year. I loved my swag last year. Made a change, it was, it was smarter. It, um, it just all round worked better for me than, than a wreath. And, I've had reads for goodness knows how many years now. So. Always remembering to keep it, you know, flowing downwards. Keep it natural looking. Um, and then, you know, I always, and this isn't so easy when it's dripping wet from, um, if it's if I've used uh, you know wet oasis and uh, it's full of water because obviously as you add the plants and put the holes in the water starts dripping like mad so but I always put it on the front door and then shut the front door walk away and walk back to the front door as if I hadn't seen it again so I do the same thing when I'm buying glasses I walk away from the mirror and walk back to the mirror 
to see what I think of myself. I went to look at glasses yesterday actually and because I wear lenses nearly all the time now, I couldn't believe the prices honestly. It was um, £150 for the lenses and then obviously whatever frame I chose on top of that, it's a lot of money isn't it? So uh, I ended up walking out and saying, I, you know, nothing grabbed me, nothing made me go, oh yeah, they're nice. I might just have frames put in my, um, lenses put in my existing frames, you know, because like I say, I don't wear them that often. So expensive, I'm sure it's a rip off. I don't see how, but they've got the monopoly, haven't they? Anyway, this is, you know, you can see how this is growing. When it's finished, I will show it you on the front door. Um, now, I don't know. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to try these, these maple leaves and see. These were, I think these were two ninety nine for the stem. Can't remember, but I don't want to use. They might be okay. See, I I do have a bit of a problem using the fake and the real together. It might just give it some light with the with the lighter leaves. Let's see find some space for it. I mean, I could wire this up, obviously. Mm, I'm not sure. What I'm gonna do is, is group three together and, and see how that looks. Just play with it and see, you know. It's not bad actually but if I put that up there I will need it down here so I will use this stem going to see if I can feed this in if there's enough of a space Kind of just feel for it, really. And then make sure that they're all facing the right way. The last thing you want is for the back of the plastic to be showing. Pop those berries on top, which kind of, so it gives you the, oh, that's not bad, actually. Can you see that? It kind of carries it, carries your eye up and down. And then when I finish, when I get to the end, I'll just put another couple of leaves there. So I know this um, this video is going on a bit and I apologize for that. But uh, a few people, when I did the winter one, asked to see the autumnal one. So I am obliging, but I understand also if it's not your thing. So I've got some more clothes to show you and uh, I haven't even started getting ready for Dubai yet, which uh, I really need to do. A friend of mine was in uh, Valencia and uh, her flight home was completely cancelled and there was no flight for two days. Now, if that happens to me, I'm in trouble because I've only got one day between coming home from one and, and uh, going on the other one. So, yeah, wish me luck. I need to be organized. And I just can't get my head into gear. I don't know what that's about. I'm going to the theater again as well. Oh, God. 
goodness. Crazy. I tell you that that deodorant's gonna have to work hard this week. That's a really nice, it's a lovely red bit there. So I am going to do the stem thing, um, and I'll show you what I mean by that when I when I get there, and then I'll also show you how I make um, the big bow. Yeah, I'm not completely happy with those leaves. So what I'm going to do is just kind of hide them a little bit with some more of the eucalyptus. I don't like the fact that you can see the, um, yeah, that's better. So you get that little bit of light, but you can't see so much the uh, veins of the leaf. Yeah. So I'll just carry on greening this up at the top. It's surprising how much you use, you know. I thought I had far too much, but I didn't, it turns out. And the few stems I've got left, I can just put into a vase, really. I hope this comes off my fingers. It looks awful, doesn't it? I mean, when you think that, you know, when I was a kid, loads of people walk around with with the uh, nicotine stained fingers like this. Look at that. I wouldn't be able to do this with gloves on. I remember trying to um, do my kids' wedding flowers with gloves on so I didn't spoil my nails. And uh, when I was trying to wire things up, I ended up with the wire was all stuck around the gloves and pulling my, tearing the gloves open and, oh. It's a right old game. So let's see, just go slightly up at this point. So that last one I just put here, so it kind of gave it some depth at the top. Do the same the other side. And then just gonna get some more of the red. I just suddenly felt really hungry. I thought, what time is it? It's uh, 20 past one, no wonder I'm hungry. So nice, see that? That was cute, isn't it? I've started um, getting everything ready for the uh, coffee morning that I'm having on the 21st of October for uh, Dementia UK. And um, you know Lily Silk, who I do the silk collaborations with, I'm doing another one soon. Um, they've given me or they're giving me, I haven't got them yet, four silk pillowcases and four silk sleep masks for the raffle, which I think is really generous of them. So I'm fairly happy with that. Um, so before I do any more, I will get some stalks together. So what I need to do is just find some of the you know, flowers that I've, that some of the stems that I've used already. And cut them down. And then just gather, gather them together really. I mean, it sounds a bit odd, but it does work. Well, it has worked in the past, famous last words. 
some eucalyptus and um, to get all the leaves off them. I actually learned this um, at Jane Packer when I was, I did a, a couple of courses there. She was such an amazing florist, it's so sad that she died too young. So I need a decent amount, because otherwise it'll look completely unbalanced. Um, just a natural kind of group of, of stalks, really. make such a mess honestly so just maybe another couple little ones I don't want to take them off you know off um, stems that I could use in an arrangement. Oh, there's a nice one. Oh no, that was a fake one. Don't want that. Let's see. No, I think that's about it actually. Let's see, I must be able to find one more. Forestry is really hard work, you know. I always think uh, people who work, you know, work in florists and have florist shops, they must be really passionate about it because, you know, I have to be out in all weathers. So now I'm going to use the same trick again um, with the wire. And basically you hold the wire against bend it over and then it's kind of this part that is really important and that's wired those together but now I have nothing left oops that didn't work did it now I have nothing left I think these are quite short wires actually I'm gonna do this one down lower and see and what I could do is just tape these together now I've got kind of a pin effect No, I'm going to take all that back and just actually, because I haven't got any flowers at this end, I can actually just stick these stalks in because an awful lot of this is going to be hidden by the bow. So, I mean, that, that wiring technique is, you know, widely used um, and it's what you'll find on most of these things. But because I've got capacity in this oasis, I'm just going to do it kind of as if the stalks were actually growing, you know, as if the leaves were actually growing off these stalks, which obviously they're not. So, Let's see. So you can see what I'm going for here. I will put another couple on there. I just, you know what? I'm not going to do that until I have made the bow. And then we can see if it needs adjusting. So it's very, very autumnal, isn't it? I mean, it looks like I've just been, the idea is I've just walked through the forest and collected some autumn foliage. Now, now for the bow. See, I did have this ribbon. I was going to use this, I think they call it buffalo ribbon in America, but I think it's too harsh a contrast against the all these natural colours. So... I could go, let me see. I think 
I'm going to go with this natural Hessian. And I was going to do this one, but this has actually got some glitter in it. And I don't want glitter. It's not Christmas, it's autumn. So I'm going to go with this one. That's what happens when you get in a muddle. So, um, yeah, I'm going to use this one. And I need about four metres. Um, yeah, so let's see. I'll just get my scissors ready. Um, this is brilliant. This is actually, if any of you do have a stack of ribbons and on reels like this, this is just from Ikea. It's um, what they have the colouring paper on. So I'm going to get my ribbon and just start it off with a little pinch here at the bottom, like this. I'm going to hold that between my thumb and finger and create a small loop. And that loop is just to hide the mechanics, really. So it's quite straightforward. You pinch always at that loop and twist so that the front facing of your ribbon is always there. So you come over this side and twist and back this side and twist. And then make the next loop slightly bigger. Twist and this one and twist. So keep going, we're going slightly bigger, twist, twist. So that's three, I think I want to do another two loops. It is, you know, it's tricky. I'm not going to pretend it's not tricky because it is, but um, it's not difficult either. So you can see there, I've got the, the main episode of the bow. And then I'm going to just come up. I want a couple of tails on this. I think I'll do four tails. So I've got all of that pinch between my thumb and forefinger and then depending on the length of the tail I'm going to do that one obviously I'm not going to leave those loops uncut they'll be they'll be cut and then another loop at the back there so just going to cut that off squeeze that all together. Cool, this ribbon's quite bulky actually. I'm just going to use the wire similarly to how I've used it already and then get it at the back and twist as hard as you can. Twist it round and round until that is secured and then you can just fluff up Fluff up your bow, easy for you to say, however you like, and then I'm going to cut these tails. I'm going to do them kind of uneven because I don't want them all the same. I'm just going to pop that into the top of the um, swag that's really nice and secure in there and let those fall down into the arrangement this is um, wired edge ribbon so you can kind of make it kind of behave to a certain extent if that was just regular ribbon so that's the um 
basis of the swag. I've just got a little bit of filling to do, which I will literally use any little bits and bobs that are lying around and fill that in. And then we'll put it on the door and see what we think. Always look at both sides. It's so easy to, to concentrate on the side you're working on. I, you know, it's amazing, isn't it? I really, really like this, this uh, red spiky leaf. It's so, um, so attractive. Just a few more of those. Keep going to pick up the wrong scissors. So this is taking ages, isn't it? But you know, I'm I'm doing it in real time because I, you know I could have just done it and then and just show you the finished article, but that wouldn't be true, would it? And I do like to try and keep it real. It's not difficult. It's just a case of having the right equipment and uh, giving it a go, really, honestly. And at least you know you've done it and you can be proud of it. And you know, it'd be very easy to add to this if you wanted to add some pumpkins in or um, anything else for that matter. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the camera, put it on the front door and we can have a look and see.